In just a few months, they'll be releasing a Super Mario Bros. movie, completely animated and with Chris Pratt as the voice of Mario for some reason. Well, I'm not sure how that's gonna go. Can you imagine if they made a live-action Mario film about 20 years ago starring Bob Hoskins for some reason? Well, believe it or not, they did, and at the Channel Point's request of Yoshi, today we're gonna look at Super Mario Bros. the movie, released in 1993. So this film was directed by a husband and wife team of Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel, who also created the Max Headroom series. The film stars Bob Hoskins, as previously mentioned, as well as John Leguizamo, Dennis Hopper, and Samantha Mathis. The film centers around, of course, Mario and Luigi, who are real-life plumbers down on their luck, until they meet a girl named Daisy who's digging for dinosaur bones. Daisy then gets kidnapped and taken to another dimension, so Mario and Luigi follow her to that dimension, where turns out dinosaurs still roam and they're trying to merge the dimensions and take over the human world. On a budget of somewhere in between 42 to 48 million dollars, this was a massive financial failure, only making back about 39 million worldwide. And saying this got negative reviews from critics might actually be an understatement, as this is considered one of the worst films ever made. But of course, much like most of the worst films ever made, this is now considered a cult classic. My biggest question going into this was, is it just bad, or is it so bad it's good? Well, we're gonna find out right now as we look at Super Mario Bros, released in 1993. So our film begins 65 million years ago when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. And then of course they were wiped out by a meteorite, but turns out not really as the meteorite actually created an alternate dimension where the dinosaurs survived. We then go to 1973 where a woman leaves an egg with a crystal on the doorstep of a church before she's kidnapped by somebody named Koopa. The egg hatches and a seemingly human child comes out of it. Well, that was weird. Anyway, we now jump to 1993, where we meet two plumbers named Mario Mario and Luigi Mario, who are brothers. And yes, their last name is Mario. They're pretty flat broke as all their plumbing jobs keep getting taken by a corporation called Scapelli. The corporation is headed by Anthony Scapelli, who's played by Gianni Russo, who played Carlo in The Godfather. And he's trying to take over a dinosaur excavation site, which is led by a university student named Daisy. He also threatens Daisy with a disappearance as a bunch of girls around Brooklyn have been disappearing recently. We then meet a couple of morons named Iggy and Spike who apparently are Koopa's cousins and are attempting to kidnap Daisy for some reason. Daisy then meets Mario and Luigi and after Luigi lets her use the phone and gives her some coins for it, they give her a lift home. Mario also asks her out for Luigi and they go on a double date later with Mario and Mario's girlfriend Daniela. And after Mario drops Daniela off, Iggy and Spike kidnap Daniela, mistaking her for Daisy. Daisy then shows Luigi the excavation site, while two of Scapelli's men attempt to flood it. Luigi goes and gets Mario, and using their master plumber skills, they fix the pipe. Unfortunately for them, while they're doing this, Iggy and Spike come from behind and knock them out, and kidnap Daisy. They wake up not long after, and they hear Daisy screams, but can't see her. Oh wait, there she is. She's in the wall. And before she goes fully back into the wall, Luigi's able to grab the rock around her neck. Luigi and Mario then jump through the wall into an alternate dimension and an alternate Manhattan called dino Hatton. Creative, right? We then once again meet King Koopa as well as his girlfriend Lena, who's played by Fiona Shaw. Spike and Iggy tell him that they've got the princess. That's right, Daisy is apparently a princess, but they don't have the rock, which is key, because Koopa needs that to go into the other dimension and take it over. Spike and Iggy are like, oh yeah, the plumbers have it. Speaking of said plumbers, they get the rock stolen by some old lady who then gets thrown off a bridge by a much larger lady who takes the rock and flies away on some boots. Mario and Luigi then meet a musician named Toad who is against King Koopa and they're taken downtown by the police along with Toad because an APB was put out for some plumbers. Daisy meanwhile is thrown in a room with Daniela as well as the other girls who were kidnapped from Brooklyn. Mario and Luigi then meet King Koopa, who takes them into some de-evolving room, and oh my god, that guy was also in Santa with muzzles. What a resume. And yes, I said de-evolving room, as they use a machine to de-evolve Toad into some big monster called a Goomba. 
and Toad Goomba is then given a harmonica to play, because it fits his personality, I guess. Mario and Luigi then take out the guards and attempt to de-evolve King Koopa by 180 million years, which doesn't work, which I guess implies that he's already that old. Mario and Luigi are then able to jack a cop car and escape from the police station. They end up going through an unfinished tunnel and fall through into a desert. Meanwhile, Lena introduces herself to Daisy and reveals to her that she's actually the princess. Meanwhile, Iggy and Spike are then advanced and made smarter. Meanwhile, Daisy meets a primitive dinosaur named Yoshi, as well as King Koopa himself, who's getting real creepy with her. Spike and Iggy head to the desert to arrest Mario and Luigi, but despite being smarter, they still fail miserably. They also discover that Mario and Luigi don't have the rock, but they know who does, Big Bertha, so they team up to go get it. And in return, they'll take Mario and Luigi to Daisy, except probably not. They go to the club and meet Big Bertha, and after Mario uses some of his charm, he's able to get the rock off her. Lena and some Goombas then show up, and she gets the rock, while Big Bertha helps Mario and Luigi escape. Meanwhile, King Koopa goes into a room and meets some giant fungus pile, which I guess is the actual king who he somehow turned into fungus. Mario and Luigi, meanwhile, arrive at Koopa's tower in the back of a garbage truck. They go in for the basement and seal off some valves to make the place colder and find some brand spanking new outfits. They hide in an elevator behind multiple Goombas who have no death perception and eventually escape after Luigi makes them all dance. Also, Koopa orders Spike and Iggy dead because I guess they've turned babyface now and they're against him? Lena also tries to tell King Koopa that she has the rock, but he tells her to fuck off, so she's like, okay, my turn then. And by my turn, I mean she attempts to kill Daisy, but Yoshi stops her. Daisy escapes and then saves Spike and Iggy and also saves Toad Koopa after he was set on fire by fellow Koopas. Turns out Spike and Iggy have actually been on her father's side the entire time and they take her to him. I, this is never explained further. They're just apparently secret mercenaries of her father, but they were dumb before. Were they pretending to be dumb, or did they only turn face after they were made smart? Maybe that's it, but it was it's just very vague. Meanwhile, Mario and Luigi make their way up through the tower and reunite with Daisy. And after learning that Daniela is here too, Mario goes to save her, while Luigi and Daisy are absconded by King Koopa. King Koopa also learns of Lena's betrayal and has her arrested before she can escape to the other dimension with the rock. Mario then finds Daniela and the other Brooklyn girls and takes out a couple of Goombas to save them. King Koopa now has the rock as well as Daisy and Luigi unfortunately, but luckily Mario and the girls are escaping on a mattress and they run right into him. Mario then begins to fight with King Koopa and knocks the rock loose of his grasp, which Lena catches before electrocuting herself, but she's fine. Mario then baits King Koopa by pretending to have the rock, while Daisy and Luigi chase after Lena. Mario and King Koopa face off and Mario lights a bomb on, but it falls for the cracks. The other Brooklyn girls then go for the portal as Lena attempts to activate it, but the strength of the portal evaporates her. And turns out this is why King Koopa needed Daisy, as she's the only one powerful enough because of her lineage, I guess, to actually withstand the crystal's power. The dimensions then merge, and the Twin Towers are immediately destroyed, which has not fucking aged well. King Koopa then turns Anthony Scapelli into a monkey, de-evolving him. However, Daisy and Luigi were able to pull the rock out of the merging circle thing, and the dimensions are unmerged once again, sending Mario and King Koopa back to Dino Hat. Koopa orders the Goombas to kill Mario, but Toad Goomba ends up playing a song on his harmonica and they all start dancing again. Big Bertha then gives Luigi the jet boots and he starts flying around while King Koopa's shooting fire at him and yelling, Ah, plumbers, plumbers, which was legitimately funny. Luigi also got some de-evolving guns from Toad Goomba, which he just happened to have, and they used them to de-evolve King Koopa as he's blasted into the air by that bomb bomb from earlier. And also that bomb bomb I talked about had a Reebok logo on it. What incredible marketing. King Koopa's then turned into a weird looking T-Rex thing, so they shoot him with the de-evolver again, and then he turns into Muck. Cool, he's dead and everyone's happy, and since he's dead, the king re-evolves from the fungus somehow, because that's how that works. 
Daisy then sends Mario and Luigi home, not returning herself as she wants to stay and build the kingdom with her father. We then jump to three weeks later where Mario and Luigi are now famous and have been dubbed the Super Mario Bros. And then Daisy shows up, telling them that there's a new problem and it's time for a new adventure, setting up a sequel, which thankfully to God never happened. So I have a lot to say about this movie, but I would like to start with a quote Bob Hoskins gave about it, rest his soul, in an interview in 2007. Hoskins said, The worst thing I ever did? Super Mario Brothers. It was a fucking nightmare. The whole experience was a nightmare. It had a husband and wife team directing whose arrogance had been mistaken for talent. After so many weeks, their own agent told them to get off the set. Fucking nightmare. Fucking idiots. However, his son Jack liked the film and praised his performance, and I have to too, because for better or for worse, Bob Hoskins really gave his all to this film. I don't know why, but he did. Dennis Hopper did too. He didn't do a very good job, but he tried, and I'd say his performance was part of the so bad it's good. Like, most of this movie was not so bad it's good, but his performance was. But I mean, I have so many questions. First of all, why did they go with Daisy instead of Peach? I guess maybe because Daisy sounds like it could be a real name. It is somewhat of a common name and Peach isn't, so I guess maybe that's why. Also, how did Koopa even take over in the first place? And how was the king turned into fungus? Was his original, was he originally fungus? If they de-evolved him, wouldn't he become a dinosaur? Why did he become fungus? Did they de-evolve him by like two trillion years? And also, how did he just not be fungus anymore? Did Koopa's death break all the spells, except they weren't spells, they were caused by a machine? Or was it not? Was it caused by magic? Is King Koopa a wizard? Spike and Iggy were really weird too. They're supposed to be Koopa's cousins, but they were actually on the king's side. Were they on the king's side the whole time? Or did they just get on the king's side after they became smarter? Again, they never went into that. And also, what was the fucking point of Scapelli? They showed him once at the beginning. They, they were established at the beginning like they were going to be the big bad. They were drilling into the excavation site and trying to kick all those kids out for no reason other than Verda Mafia, I guess. I thought it was like a bigger thing. I thought the plot twist was going to be that Scavelli had actually been working with King Koopa to merge the dimensions because they're also evil and he had tricked them. But no, he just immediately comes to Earth when the dimensions were momentarily merged and just turns him into a monkey. He didn't even know who he fucking was. There was no point to him. And I think that about sums it up, to be honest. There was really no point to much of any of this. So would I recommend you watch this movie? If you like bad movies, sure, because this is absolutely a bad movie. Bob Hoskins put what he had into it. Again, Dennis Hopper's performance was terrible, but it was funny, so at least there's that. John Legazano and Samantha Mathis tried. They made Fiona Shaw do an American accent for some reason, which wasn't terrible, but I'm sure she hated it. And then, yeah, if you like bad movies, I guess, but th this is just kind of painful. Oh, and also, I think I mentioned this in a review for that, but this film was so bad that they didn't make a movie about another Nintendo property until Detective Pikachu in 2019. And just remember, if his animated Mario Bros. movie coming out in a couple months is bad, there's no way it could possibly be this bad. Eat your heart out, Chris Pratt. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to do it for my review of Super Mario Bros. the movie. Thank you, Yoshi, for using your points on this. Next week, we'll be looking at Into the Spider-Verse, which should be fun. But that is it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, be sure to leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the video description down below. Thank you to all my patrons who are also named in the video description for supporting me and all my channels. I appreciate you guys. With all that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. This has been my review of Super Mario Bros. released in 1993, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.